Mark 6. Let's see. So right when he finished healing the young maiden, he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Why? Because somebody ill and sick is reaching out, more trusting, believing, willing to do cures. If you're not sick, you don't need a cure. So I suppose they, their faith, as we see with the woman with the issue of blood, your faith has healed you, he said. So, faith. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. So, 6-5... So the his common earthly position as the carpenter in six three, they refused to see him as higher than themselves and found it impossible to accept him as the Son of God, Son of Mary. Only here is Jesus called this. <clears throat> the normal Jewish practice was to identify a son by his father's name. Perhaps that was not done here because Joseph was already dead or because Christ's audience was recalling the rumors concerning Jesus' illegitimate birth. A man was called the son of his mother if his father was unknown and were purposefully insulting him in these, this title as a reference to illegitimacy. The brothers were the actual half-brothers of Jesus. James was later the leader in the Jerusalem church. But 6 4. Uh... He could do no miracle. That This is not to suggest that his powers diminished by their unbelief. It suggests that because of their unbelief, people were not coming to him for healing or miracles the way they did in Capernaum. Uh, or more importantly, it may be signify that Christ limited his ministry both as an act of mercy so that the exposure to the greater light would not result in worse hardening that would only subject them to greater condemnation. Mm. Because they rejected him, miracles belong among those who are ready to believe. Wondered means Jesus was completely astonished and amazed at Nazareth's reaction to him, his teaching and his miracles. He was not surprised at the fact of the people's unbelief, but how they could reject him while claiming to know all about him. Faith should have been the response in that town at, in that town in Galilee, the region where Christ did so many miracles and so much teaching around the villages. The outcome of Jesus' visit to Nazareth was that he left there and made a teaching tour of other places in Galilee, concluding near where he started. All right, sorry. I just wanted to see what Dr. MacArthur said about he marveled. Um, he summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed that they should take nothing for their journey except a mere staff. Save a staff only, no script, no bread, no money in their purse. 
no bag, no money in their belt, but to wear sandals. But to be shod with sandals, and not to put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into a house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. That uh, reminds me back to hospitality of Abraham. And, you know, he invited them in. He said, stop, or, uh, you know, be comforted with, the, with bread. And um, he gave them milk and cheese. And, and then you saw the contrast of how Sodom and Gomorrah treated them. They wanted to rape the angels. They wanted to know them. So this that's that same kind of thing. Like, And we just read in the last video, if you receive a prophet in a prophet's name or a disciple in a disciple's name or give a cup of water, cool water, then you do it to Jesus himself. So be careful how you listen. So... Uh, so, okay, verse 12, this is in the King James. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. And King Herod heard of him, for his name was spread abroad. And he said that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works show forth themselves in him. Others said that it is Elias. Others said that, that it is a prophet, or it is one of the prophets. But when Herod, that would be the prophets of old, verse 15 there. But Herod heard, therefore, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him, but she could not, for fear. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and holy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things, and heard him gladly, and ended up killing him. And when a convenient day was come that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee, and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him the king said unto the damsel ask of me whatsoever thou wilt and I will give it thee and she swear unto her or he swear unto her whatsoever thou shalt ask of me I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom do you think he was a little carried away there And she went forth and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. <laughs> That's what you asked for. The head of John the Baptist. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceedingly sorry, yet for his oath's sake, and for their sakes, which sat with him, he would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison. And brought his head in a charger and gave it to the damsel. And the damsel gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard of it, they came and took up his corpse and laid it in a tomb. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus, told him all things both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. Privily. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot there, there out of all cities, and out went them, and came together unto the Lord. 
unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the village and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat? He saith unto them, How many loaves have thee? Go and see. And when they knew, they say, Five and two fishes. He commanded five and two fishes. He commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass, and they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, two little fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And when they did all eat and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes, and they that did eat of the loaves were, a five, were about five thousand men. And straight away he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, while he sent the people away. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them. And he saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased. And they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure, and wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves. For their heart was hardened. If you're, we, we all had hard hearts. That's how we come into this world. If your heart's hardened, even if you see someone come back from the dead, Jesus says elsewhere, you will not believe. If you will not believe the prophets and the scripture, you will not believe even if someone comes back from the dead. Their heart was hardened. That's very important. Verse 52. My pastor, Dr. MacArthur, says, The disciples' minds were impenetrable so that they could not perceive what Christ was saying. This phrase conveys and or alludes to rebellion, not just ignorance. So I think I have a hard heart for some things. I understand that concept. It's like you don't want to see the truth and you keep living on that line and pushing for what your flesh wants or you, your earthly mind wants rather than focusing on the things of God. So I, I definitely know how that is. And God, may you soften our hearts in all areas and be sovereign over all Take all thoughts captive, as the scripture says. Take every thought captive, the Bible. Second Corinthians ten five. Destroying speculations and every lofty things raised up against the knowledge of God, we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Um, 
We demolish arguments. Strongholds. Oh, it was in verse 3, 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, stiffening up of the body, anger towards the things of God. <clears throat> NASB. Where were we? 51. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind stopped, and they were utterly astonished, for they had not gained any insight from the incident of the loaves, but their heart was hardened. Now, when Gennesaret, when they had crossed over, the, they came to the land at Gennesaret and moored in the shore, or moored to the shore. When they got out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him and ran about the whole country and began to carry here and there on their pallets those who were sick to the place they heard he was. Wherever he entered the villages or cities or countryside, they were laying the sick in the marketplaces and imploring him that they might just touch the fringes of his cloak. And as many as touched it were being cured. They ran through the whole region around about. Those were sick. Yes, you didn't see this happening in Nazareth. Not many, He healed not many people. Then look how they react here. Boy, people were running around about. Like, bring, bring Joseph. He's sick. He's bring him. Okay. As many as touched him were healed. That was Mark 6. Oh, my favorite shoes. How does it know? Okay. Show Mark 6, Luke 9. But do we have time? No. Time to go to work. Oh, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I got so busy yesterday. I didn't. Distracted. Today I'll use my lunch up to record. Their hearts be unhardened. <clears throat> 